All right, hello OAS family. Today we are going to be reviewing another book, and today the book is called Drawing Goldfish and Golden Carps. Uh, before we get too far into the review, just the basics on the book, uh, dimensions wise, it is eight and a quarter wide by 11 and three quarter inches tall. And the total number of pages is functionally about 109. So we're going to get right into the book here. The author of the book is uh, Lin Hu Kuei. And it has uh, instruction in both Chinese and English. So you can see even these long write-ups. Uh, they are uh, complete translations in English. So, get into the table of contents. See a couple nice finished compositions there on the table of contents. And then we're getting into the more detailed instruction here. So you can see that there is a section on anatomy. Talks about faces, eyes, body shapes. Fins. And then here's the translation. Okay, so then it has a section on techniques for rendering individual fish. So this is a very good approach because, uh, you know, in a goldfish painting, obviously the stars of the painting are the fish themselves. So this is going to be more detailed instruction about how to paint the stars of your composition. So here you can see uh, this goldfish. Then we get a top-down view of this one with the telescope eyes, the larger eyes. And this sort of very popular kind of calico coloration. And then spotted one, this is sort of like swimming from the back, so you can see more of the tail fin. And you can tell uh, the author is actually a fan of the goldfish, because he sort of has all these individual names um, here, and these are all sort of developed bred strains. These fancy goldfish were developed from that sort of common carp, comet-shaped fish, which just looks like a regular fish. And then through selective breeding, they created all these original body shapes and long fins and whatnot. So this is the white aranda with the red cap, sort of facing diagonally forward. Again, we get a different view, different orientation of the fish. And then this is the red goose lead. So you can see this is pretty detailed uh, information. We get these sort of sequential renderings that build from simpler to more complicated. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, the calico wenyu. So you can see here a lot of these goldfish are bred with these sort of shiny scales that they call pearl scales. And, and you can see them rendered here. And this is a dragon eye with a pearl scale. Uh, the wed, uh, red and white dragon eye. Okay, so red and black dragon eye. And now we're getting into uh, the koi. So uh, we're changing body shapes now dealing with sort of a more traditionally shaped longer fish. So you can see uh, koi are often bred, I mean, usually they're exclusively bred for viewing from the top. So you can see that uh, the, the nicer koi, they have their prettiest patterns on the top of the fish. So this is the common carp. You can see you don't have like the fancy colors that you do on the koi. This is karasu gol. Shirobeko. 
Okay, so uh, now we get into compositions. So the cool thing about this book is it actually also has some sequential information on the elements that aren't the fish. So a lot of times uh, when you see a book like this, it will just show you um, sort of instructions for how to paint the stars, and then it just shows you a final painting. But here you can see they're actually building up the composition from beginning to end, and they're including um, sequential buildups of uh, these sort of leaf elements that are not the fish. So that's great. Um, so we get this sort of lotus pond with the goldfish in there, and then it shows you kind of how to paint the lotus, lotus as well as the fish. Okay, and another sort of featuring lotus. It'd be nice to live in a climate where you could actually keep these kind of fish uh, in a lotus pond. That would be so cool to have like that tropical climate. All right, so this is um, kind of over, like almost like a bamboo, sort of leaning over a pond, and then you're seeing the fish on the top. Neat composition. All right. This is uh, hibiscus with the goldfish. And morning glory with some pearl scale goldfish. Banana leaves with some carp. Really lovely painting there. A willow with carp. And then wisteria and golden carp. Fallen petals and carp. So uh, carp and goldfish are a symbol of prosperity and longevity in China. So it's sort of uh, cool to see um, them mixed with these other symbolic elements and symbolic subjects. So I like seeing you know these classic uh, uh, flowers mixed with the goldfish and the koi, it's, it's quite meaningful. Here is a, actually a planted aquarium. If you guys never seen a planted aquarium before, I actually ran a business that specialized in these things and they're really beautiful. They're like underwater gardens of plants and they're very, very popular in Asia. So you can see like that little picture of the planted aquarium there. So this is um, goldfish with a floating plant that they call duckweed simple composition now it goes into some drawings of like different compositions like ways to show different fish and the or different orientations and how they face facing and relating to each other groups of two and then groups of three all right and then the same thing with the carp and we get these different sort of orientations of swimming and different ideas for composition. So once you know how to paint like one fish, then it shows you how to group uh, more than one in a composition. All right, so these are, this is sort of like, more like the gallery section where he's showing sort of final paintings. So you can see here him really fly and you can see these final compositions really really lovely paintings look at that so the wilted lotus leaf and there's the way it's disintegrating and then you see the carp underneath Wonderful idea, and look at that execution with those holes in the lotus leaves like that. So great.
this is the first piece that we see that's just an ink. Nice. Oh, the jumping. So cool. Very Japanese inspired painting, I feel. Like you see a lot of. So it's sort of super interesting because you see, we, we sort of see Chinese culture as being the source of a lot of different Asian cultures. You know, I mean, uh, China has one of the oldest cultures in the world and there's a lot of technological innovation but then what you see is once the culture gets passed it gets sort of developed and there was a lot of things that the sort of Japanese took and and sort of refined and then the influence goes back the other way so then you see sort of Chinese artists especially the ones that were in Taiwan because of its geographic location being influenced by the way the Japanese were doing things and so it's kind of cool to see that influence another jumping carp pair of jumping carp really nice so that is it all right so that's drawing goldfish and golden carps by lynn Thanks so much for watching this book review. Uh, you can buy this book and many others at our website, which is at orientalartsupply.com. Make sure and like and subscribe this video. And when you subscribe, make sure there's this little bell icon that you hit that bell icon. That way you'll get notified whenever we release a new video. So thanks a bunch. Hope you enjoyed it and happy painting.